So the first message of the cross is the message of forgiveness and atonement. If you don't know Jesus, you will go to hell. There is no way to appease God. The only way to appease God is to be killed. Is to be judged. It's called propitiation. The anger of God won't rest. The wrath of God won't rest. The sinner must die. It said the soul that sinned shall die. The Bible says all we as, as sheep have gone astray. Isaiah 53 verse 6. For all of sin, falling short of the glory of God. Look at Romans chapter 3 from verse 23 to 25. He said, for all have seen, all of us, and have fallen short of the glory of God. Verse 24, he said, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ. Outside of Christ, there's no redemption. Anybody that tells you, if you do penance, you will... The, the Bible spelled it. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is not fasting. The wages of sin is not prayer. The wages of sin is not charity. The wages of sin is not to cut yourself. It's not to kneel down and climb a mountain. The wages of sin is death. Nothing can satisfy God's anger. That's why Jesus died. So if you are not included in Christ, if you like do all the charity in the world, you will die and go to hell. If you like pray every second of your life, you will die and go to hell. There are many religions of the world, they pray until their knee becomes like good knee. Their head is dark. It will not save you. The wages of sin is not prayer. It's death. And only Christ died for sins. That's why he said we have redemption through his blood. Now see what he said in verse 25. He said whom God had set forth to be the propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the washing away remission of sin that are past and present through the forbearance of God. This is why we preach the gospel. And preach it aggressively. Because the world is deluded. There are doctrines of demons everywhere. They told them, if you do enough charity, you will be forgiven. It's a joke. They told them, if you do enough penance, you will be forgiven. It's a joke. The wages of sin is death. And so only those who are in Christ, for whom Christ paid the ultimate penalty of death, are forgiven. This is the message of the cross. The second message of the cross is the manifestation of the sacrificial love of God. John 3, 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There was nothing that had the power to pay for our sins. And when God didn't find anything, God made himself to become a man so that he will die for us. You need to read this scripture in the message version. Philippians 2 from verse 5 to verse 8. He said, think of yourselves the way Christ thought of himself. He said, for he had equal status with God but didn't think too much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Verse 7, he said, not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave and became human. This is the love of God. How many of you know, see all these our presidents that come during election and say, Hey, we will do this. We will provide light. We will provide security. We will provide water. The moment they go into office, the next thing you will see are black land cruisers and yachts and private jet. The same people who are coming are collecting granite from people who are selling, showing love, fake love. The moment they enter the office, they forget you. How many presidents will resign? 
because they can't meet the needs of their people not one but this one who is greater than all the presidents in the world when it was time to save man he removed all the privileges of a god he became a man among men he was a slave and he was not just a slave he was killed like a criminal can you imagine the shame Jesus hung on the cross naked his mother was looking at him it's called the sacrificial love of God this is what gives us confidence with God that's why Paul was speaking in Romans 8.32 he said if he did not withhold his only begotten son but gave him freely for us how shall he not with him because this is the highest demonstration of love Jesus was speaking even among men men that are nothing he said there's no greater love than this that a man gives his life for his friend these are men that have nothing no status nothing but we are talking about the almighty the one that all the angels worship the one that the stars and the galaxies worship the one that the thunder and the lightnings worship the one that every creature worship he took off that garment forfeited worship forfeited all the privileges that made him a god and he came and walked among us he was not even born in the hospital he was born in a manger with camels without recognition they wanted to kill him they had to escape with him at night to Egypt the one that carries all the powers but he kept himself vulnerable still demonstrating love and when the time came he allowed himself you know when they came to arrest him to show you that this is not weakness this is love he asked them, whom seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. All of them fell down. <laughs> whom seek ye? Jesus of Nazareth. I said, I am he. All of them fell down like dead men. He now told them, this is your hour. For this cause was I born. For this cause came I into the world. He stretched forth his hand. Peter took out a knife and cut somebody's ear. He said, stop. Even there he did a miracle. He carried the ear from the ground, put it and was healed. And he said, listen, Peter, if I want to fight now, I will call for 12 legions of angels. 12. Now. I'm not powerless. Because he told them, he said, this commandment have I received of the Father. I have the power to lay down my life and to take it up. He said, no man take it my life from me. It was a demonstration of the love of God. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. This is the message of the cross. God loves you unconditionally. And there's nothing you can do about it. In Romans 5, 8. It says, why we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. Why we didn't qualify. Christ died for us. So, you people are not forgiven because they deserve it. When I start showing you the implication of the cross, I will show you why God tells you to forgive. You forgive others because you are forgiven. You don't forgive others because they deserve it. Because if it is based on merit, none of us qualify for forgiveness. The message of the cross. Number three, victory over sin and death. First Corinthians 15, 55 to 57. It said, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin in the law. He said, but thanks be to God. Who gives us victory? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How did God give us that victory? Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15. This is how death, this is how sin was overcome. He said, Jesus blotted the handwriting of every ordinance that was written against us. He said he took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. So while he was on the cross, iniquity was hanging there because that was the price for sin. That's why 2 Corinthians 5.21 said, God made him that was without sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he defeated sin and he defeated death because after he died, he rose again. He is my life, my strength, my soul. Number four, victory over Satan. See, the cross is not a wood in T-shape. 
The cross is the substitutionary death of Jesus and it has implications. And the fourth message of the cross is the triumph of Christ over Satan. Scripture we just read, Colossians 2 verse 15. If you read it, the Bible said, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them triumphing over them in it. What is in it is the cross. Because verse 14 told us that he nailed our sins to the cross. So at the cross, Satan was defeated. Satan thought the battle is about miracles. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. It's not about miracles, it's about surrendering. Because man fell through rebellion. Man will be redeemed through humility and surrender. Man will be redeemed through submission to the government of God. And Jesus fought that battle in Gethsemane. If it were possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, not my will but thine. So when he hung on that cross, he was defeating the one that has power over death. Look at the way Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 puts it. Write these scriptures down. I'm deliberate in my emphasis. Write them. Meditate on them. Let these things become real. It will be the substance and the foundation of your faith. I know that I'm forgiven. There's nothing any demon can tell me any day, any time. Because of the cross, I know. The sacrifice was perfect. I'm fully atoned for. I know I'm forgiven. Nothing. See, there's no preacher, there's no demon, there's no end. Nobody can come to put me in guilt. Some of us have passed the realm of depression. I know I'm forgiven. Because of the sacrifice of Christ. I also know God loves me. I, I, I don't need... See, some of us know this thing too much. Sometimes, men make you feel if they leave you, you will die. When you go, we don't think of you once. We are saturated with the love of God. Those who are around me, they know. Nothing moves me. I know the love of God too much. He's, the Bible said, He passeth knowledge. It has garrisoned my heart. Nothing that leaves me affects me. Is it money? Is it asset? Is it people? If you go, may the Lord prosper you wherever you are going. It's over. I will not think about it once. The love of Christ has saturated me too much. Nobody can understand me. I know God loves me. I know. As I am like this, there's no failure. There's no, no victimization from any quarter that can make me feel bad. Some of you don't know why we are strong like Mount Zion. Sometimes people show up and say, look at these lies. They are saying things about you on the internet. I say, go to they get down. They don't know what they are saying. I'm making impact. That's why they are writing. How many people are they writing about? Why is it about me every day? You don't write about mediocres. They are writing about me. It's a testimony that I'm a, I'm a burning and a shining light. I'm leading my generation. That's why I'm the subject. The day I stop being the subject, something is wrong. So they should go ahead and say whatever they want to say. They say, if God be for us, who can be against us? He's the one that justifies. He's the one that condemns. And he has chosen to love me with an everlasting love. Nothing moves me. I know. And I also know that I have victory over sin. No sin can enslave me. Not one. I know that sin has been overcome. I know. And I also know that Satan has been overcome. See, we travel from city to city, from nation to nation, with audacity, and you are wondering, who are these young men talking everywhere? We know Satan has been defeated. So when we come into a city, we don't bother the strategy of the devil. When we come out, we come out with an authority that no demon can withstand. And when we are done preaching, we begin to give laws and commandments. And demons of every nation have no choice but to obey. Because we know that Satan has been overcome. It's the message of the cross. Number five is the message of reconciliation. Second Corinthians 5 verse 18 and 19. In fact, from verse 17, it says, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. He said, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, speaking about these new things, 
He said, all these things are from God. Who through Christ reconciled us to himself and did not just reconcile us, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He said, that is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Not counting their trespasses against them, but he entrusted them the message of reconciliation. I am a friend of God. God made it so. I'm not a stranger in the house of God. I have a vital relationship with God. See, there are times when I don't feel God. I still know I'm with Him. Because in the cross, I am reconciled back to God. So now, if I want to pray, I don't need to travel to a mountain necessarily. If I need quietness, I can go there. But I can have any encounter in my bathroom. I can have any encounter in my bedroom. I can have any encounter driving. I'm reconciled to God. See, things happen around my space. Things happen. Because I have a consciousness that now I live in God's realm. I've come to God's zone. That's why I said the Holy Ghost will live in you and with you forever. The cross made that happen. See, some of you don't know you are reconciled with God. So you think you, you, you feel God when you are in church. Church has left the building. I've become the mobile altar of God. Wherever I go, church goes. Because I'm one with God. The Bible said, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. The cross reconciled us. Ephesians 2, 14 to 16. It said, for he himself is our peace. For he has made us both one. And has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace and reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross thereby killing hostility. I am reconciled to God. God is not angry with me. Even when I err, the Bible says I shall come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy. I'm reconciled. It's not a guarantee to sin. As I go down, I will show you the second dimension of the message of the cross. But it's an assurance so that the devil can no longer take advantage of you. Because he's called the accuser of the brethren. If you don't know that you are at peace with God, if you don't know that you are reconciled with God, and there's no hostility between you and God anymore, Satan will come and start whispering things to your ear. For some of us, he no longer wastes his time because he knows we know. I'm at peace with God. And that's not all. The cross is also the message of God's power and God's wisdom. You know, when Satan was trying to kill the master, he thought when Jesus dies, everything will end. He doesn't know it was a complex wisdom. That it is in dying that his purpose will be fulfilled. And so Satan helped in advancing that cause. The Bible said, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because if Jesus was not crucified, he would still be walking on earth till today. Salvation wouldn't have been possible. Because the man couldn't be sick. <laughs> Nothing could happen to him. He would have been walking, you would have come and they would tell you, the oldest man on earth is Jesus Christ. And people would have been traveling to Jerusalem to see him. But Satan thought he wanted to be smart. Let's kill this man. Oh. The way he's going, the whole world will follow him. He didn't know that when he was alive, the Holy Ghost was trapped inside him. And what God was looking for was to release the Holy Ghost as a buffet. So that everyone will carry the Holy Spirit. So when Satan wanted to kill him, he laid down his life. He said, thank you for helping fulfill this vision. Because except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies... It abides alone. So when we preach the cross, it is the wisdom of God at work. First, in that only through it will man be saved. Second, in that only through it will the anger of God be appeased. And third, in that through it, the foolishness of Satan was made manifest. So when you preach the cross, it may look foolish, look foolish to the, the Greek. It may look like a stumbling block to the Jews, but to us that are saved. The Bible said it's the wisdom 
of God. This is why when you preach this message, don't be afraid. The wisdom that sponsors it is superior to what your brain can understand. 